good morning South Africa our time is 8 o'clock Salamat Siang to our Indonesian friends uh, what a privilege I am really excited today but I'm also today a bit you know that the church is really going through some stuff and uh, I, I really believe that today's message um, will change the atmosphere I really believe sometimes we need to look at ourselves we need to focus on the inside so good morning good morning uh, Dr. Maris Higgins thank you for being part of Kingdom Disciples Network thank you also for everything um, you always have been a good friend to me since 2003 cannot believe it's already what 17 years Pastor Maris 18 years hey, so long <laughs> What a privilege to know a man of God, a man of principle, a man that really hear from God and a man that um, stand for God. Um, Bertha, goeiemorgen. Uh, yes, so, you know, today there's not a lot of people that really stand for God. They stand for other things in the name of God. But And uh, so, yeah, I'm thankful for Dr. Marius in my life. Um, yeah, we've been good friends for so many years. Um, yeah, I will start now with the word. I'm just give a minute or so for people also to join us. Tolly uh, Huyamore, good morning. Um, yes, I'm still in hospital. My wife did our MRI today. We're waiting for the result. They took some blood tests. So, yeah, hopefully today we will know something. But uh, God is in control. Amen. So. I do not live by fear, I live, you know, by the power of the Holy Spirit, and uh, yes, so let's start today, I, I'm really excited to what I want to share, maybe the, the theme itself, um, you know, is a bit of shocking, but I think it's so much true, amen, let's pray, Father, I thank you today for the privilege, it doesn't matter where we are, I'm sitting here in an uh, a country lord where 92 percent of the population the fourth largest population in the world lord are muslims people are serving islam 92 percent of the population now, i just want to bring them all before your throne of grace and may they know isa al masi may they know him may he appear to him and may they just come to the knowledge of jesus christ because Lord, even in the Quran, there's more about Jesus, Isa al Masi, as even as Muhammad. But Lord, thank you that even where I'm sitting now, that I can saturate, I can through the word of God change the atmosphere. Because I'm not just a person, but I'm a living, breathing uh, son of the Most High. And, and, and His power and His authority changes the atmosphere. And Father, I thank you. This is the time, this is the hour for this message. And I believe, Father, you just want to set people free. I thank you for everybody. Bless them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So, yes, yeah. Uh, Indonesia itself, like I've said, 92% plus minus uh, people of this country is the largest Muslim population in the world. And it's sad, it's sad that many of them do not know Jesus. Um, even most of the Quran is about Isa al Masih. Uh, that's how they know Jesus. So, But this is not. Today, my theme is a bit shocking. Um, and the thing is, actually, I first just want to say, you know, Christian loser. But then I thought, well, let me just add ruler also. Because the thing that is shocking is that we are supposed to live in authority. We are supposed to rule this world. We've come to Christ with a purpose, not just to go to heaven. We've come to Christ and we've been established and been given an authority to change the atmosphere, to bring people to the knowledge of Jesus Christ and whatever they exalt itself against the knowledge of the Word of God, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3, 4, 5. Whatever thought exalt itself against the knowledge of the word of God we should take capture in obedience to Jesus Christ and everything that exalt itself every stronghold we should tear down that's the authority we have and then uh, you know uh, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 our, our battle is not against flesh and blood but there's principalities there's, there's a demonic world there's, there's rulers 
that we are supposed to take care of. But we are so focused on what we do not have. We are so focused and the devil is using that. And, and I want to start and I want to ask you, are you a Christian loser? Are you losing the battles that you are facing, the storms you are facing, either either through sickness, maybe you lost your job, finance, maybe relationships, I can carry on. My question today, are you a Christian loser or are you a Christian ruler? Because we are called to rule this earth and, and, and what brought us to the position that we become losers? Meaning that the things start to rule over our lives. If anything, fear, anxiety, worry, stress, if those things are part of your thought, your mind, your life, you are actually being ruled by that and you're not the ruler anymore, but you're the loser. Amen. So let's go to Exodus chapter 14. I just want to lay a foundation this morning. Exodus chapter 14 verse 30 and 31. Now let's get a picture here. Grace, good morning. Salamat siyang. Uh, Exodus chapter 14 verse 30 to 31. On that day, the Lord delivered Israel from the hand of the Egyptian and Israel saw the Egyptians dead along the seashore. My question this morning to you, I present to you, do you see the devil being defeated on the cross of Calvary? When you look at the cross, do you see victory or you see a battle being lost by Jesus and his followers? So here they stand on the other side of the Red Sea. Moses and the people just went through the Red Sea the Egyptians were on the way to kill them, capture them, you know, with, with the mountains on the side and the Red Sea at the at their back. But yet God opened the Red Sea and they went through. But listen, so what happened, the Egyptians died in that situation. Listen to verse 31. So they now look at the reality of what has happened. And when Israel saw the great force by which the Lord had acted against the Egyptians, when they saw this huge force, the power, dunamis power, how God dealt with the Egyptians that tried to influence God's people, bringing them to the promised land. And I'm telling you today, whatever is exalting yourself, there's a force much bigger that you already obtained to rule over that situation, to become the victor and not the loser. Good morning, good morning. I cannot see who's on. So, <laughs> yes, good morning. Uh, I'm too afraid I touched something and then we're off. So I want you to see, when Israel saw the great force by which the Lord had acted against the Egyptian, the people feared the Lord and they believed, and the, believed the Lord and Moses his servant. So they actually stood there and they saw this multitude just, let's say, hours before. They were moaning to God, how will we have the victory? We have mountains, there's no outcome. We only have the Red Sea. How? We are three million people being stuck in this thing. How we will have? You've led us out to do what? To, so that we become the losers, so we die in the desert. I'm telling you, the devil is talking to you if you think you're a loser. No, you're a ruler. You created it into the image of God, but you need to see the power of God. You need to see the enemy being defeated in Jesus' name. You need to know that. Otherwise, the enemy will still keep on harassing you. Amen. So God is set before us here, not only as a person, but as a person who cares for all, a father's love and watchfulness for his own people. So God cared for his people, the Israelites. He saw the situation, but he didn't just look on. He created an open door. He created a situation. Amen. Our hopes in days of doubt and difficult are directed to the same personal father care. So when you are going through something, my friend, the eyes of God is upon you. Maybe today you feel like the Red Sea is behind me. Mountains here, yeah, there's no way out. God, I will perish. I'm telling you, the eyes of God is upon you. Don't speak like a loser. Start speaking 
like a child, true child of God. Start speaking to your situation. Call on the mighty name of God and you will see the enemy being defeated. And you will be like God's people standing on the shore. And you will see how God with his mighty hand defeat your situation. And you will rule over that situation. But so many times, one thing, and I, if I say that, I, I also planted the church. I had my own church and, and I also made some mistakes. And one thing I just think where the church really missed it. We've never trained believers to become warriors. We trained them to be, become church goers. We never trained people how to do warfare, how to handle the Red Sea situations, how to conquer and to rule in every situation. So whenever the storms of life comes, whenever the enemy comes, we sort of, we sort of become losers because we allow the situation to rule over us and we look at the cross, but we cannot see the victory. So listen what happened. So um, this is what we need to do, that Jesus loves you and me. He wants to get you out of that situation, but that situation will become something that will glorify him. Amen. The moment the Passover was observed, that moment Pharaoh's power was broken. I want you to see something. The moment you take communion, the moment you start looking at the cross, the moment you take communion with God, the moment the power of the enemy is broken, because that reminds the devil of what happened 2,000 years ago. I'm telling you, first we need to look at God. We should not start looking for resolutions in the natural. Amen. The moment all is right between us and God, that moment Satan's power is broken and he can no longer hold you in bondage. The moment you repent of your sin, the moment you repent of your unbelief, the moment you start repenting about what you moan about, that moment you are being restored in the power God has given you. Amen. Now listen, understand quickly here. The waters of judgment which saved the Israelites were the means of destroying the vast hordes of Egyptians. So that same water of judgment, the Red Sea, that would have been the judgment for God's people, were the means of, of the Egyptians to destroy God's people. But you see, the power of Satan is broken by the very means by which he intended to destroy you. Now, what do I say? I want you to see the picture. They go through the water. God opened it. They stand on the other side. And like I've just read now, they saw on that day how God giving them the victory. You see, it's our privilege to take our stand on the other side of the Red Sea. Now, what does it mean? When you see yourself being raised up through the baptism, my friend, when you are being baptized in Jesus Christ, you are already through the Red Sea. You're not in Egypt anymore. You're not your back to the water anymore. But you are already on the other side. You already are the victorious. God only wants you to look and to see how He defeats your enemy. So the moment you went through the sea, you went through your baptism, you will see yourself raised up with Christ into a new life. Can you see that? Because many people cannot. If you cannot know and understand what happened when you've been baptized, Romans chapter 6 verse 1, let me read that and just to bring you into the story. I want you to understand. You see the sea for the enemy was something to get rid of them. But God changed that same means to bring life and destruction. And the same enemy were died, killed by that same thing. Your baptism, my friend, is not just something you went through. Listen what he says in Romans chapter 6. I will read from verse 1. What should we say then? Should we go on sinning so that grace may increase? Of course not. How can we die as far as sin is concerned and go on living it? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into union with the Messiah Jesus were baptized into his death? Now this, therefore, through baptism we were buried with him in his death, so that just as the Messiah was raised up from dead by the Father's glory, we too may live an entirely new life. So 
when the moment you came through the baptism, you were raised up with the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. And we should, should live a life of victory, a life of rulership. Amen. So, verse 5, For if we become united with Him in a death like His, we will certainly also be united with Him in His resurrection. Amen. You see, we need to understand that sin separates us from the presence of God. Never separate us from His love. Uh, Romans 8, uh, uh, you can read that whole one, especially the last, said nothing will separate us from the love of Christ. But because God will love us, doesn't matter what we do. But the thing is, sin will separate us from His presence. Amen. And, and so, if you allow sin, you become a loser, not a ruler. You lose your authority through the sin that you've done. So when we actually say, God, please forgive me for my sins, there's actually things that happen. It's not just the blood of Jesus come and cleanse you of your sin. The blood of Jesus cleanses you, but He restores you back in the authority that you have lost through the sin that you have committed. You see, many people just repent of the sin, but they still live under without the authority being restored into their lives. That's why the things that they've done, the past things, still continue to, 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 to rule over them. And, and because of that, they cannot come into victory. They will look at the cross, but you know what? The devil will remind them of what they've done. And then they said, well, devil, I've repented. Yes, you are cleansed, but you've never been restored. That's one thing we should say, God, please restore me in my authority. So what does the blood do? He restores you in the authority as if you were never sinned, before you were sinned. Now you have that authority in that area with the presence of God, with His glory, to rule over the things that try to rule over you. Amen. So this is what we need to understand. I want you just, uh, about a week ago, I was ministering and preaching about 1 Samuel uh, uh, um, uh, uh, chapter chapter uh, chapter 4 I don't want to preach about it I just want to show you here Israel was the loser the Philistines get to them and, and I just want to give you the example what sin does if you don't deal with sin even being a child of God you cannot become the victor if you undealt sin in your life will still make you a loser in any situation I want you to see this Many people don't deal with sin, but yet they want the victory. It's not about the scriptures you quote. It's not about the things you just said. It's the thing that separates you from God. And that's the, the difference between being a loser and being a ruler. Amen. So in 1 Samuel chapter 4, we saw the Israelites come in the first battle. 4,000 Israelites died. And then the leaders, they had... At that stage, the leaders come together and they thought, well, it's a good thing. Let's just get the Ark of Covenant, the presence of God, what it resembles. It's been never done before. Let me just get a Bible and get a scripture and start quoting it in my life and I will have the victory. Well, wrong. Because they never dealt with the sin. So what happened? They brought the Ark and they lost the battle. In verse 10, we saw that 30,000 Israelites died. Because of why? Yet there was still sin in their lives. Even they thought they had the presence of God. Amen. So that's why many times we will not be the ruler in a situation. We will not be victorious because of sin that's still active in our lives. Amen. Then we get to 1 Samuel chapter chapter 7 the same story once again Samuel was was already a bit older so they all gathered around Samuel and said Samuel you know what uh, we need to get right with God and Samuel said get rid of all the idols get rid of the sin in your life and they said yes and they had the day of fasting and they got rid of all of these things and then he said bring some water and they sprinkled some water as a symbolic once again of 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 things that they brought as a sacrifice before God and then when they gathered, the, Egypt, uh, the Philistines said, listen, what is happening here with Israel? It seems like they gathered, they want to have a war. So they got up and they come, come like to war with Israel. And then when the Israelites saw that, they, they were all in fear because they still remembered what happened not long ago. So what happened here? And then they said, Samuel, please pray for us. 
But listen, they've dealt with the sin. The Bible said they took all of the idols out of the house. They fasting. And then they brought a sacrifice to God. But the main thing is they focused on God, not on the Egyptians. Even they heard the situation and they feared. But the, the biggest thing is while they were focusing in the sacrifice to God, suddenly God defeated the Egyptian, uh, the Philistines. And they just finished the job. I want you to tell you there's something we need to learn. To become a ruler is first to engage in God. Get rid of sin in your life and the things that's an abomination. The things that can make you to become a loser. I mean, so I want to ask you this. If I should explain my, my theme for the Christian loser or ruler, what are you today? How do you live today? Because if you are under sickness, you're actually not a ruler. You can tell me how you say that. Well, sickness is not from God. God wants you to rule. Well, maybe God wants to teach you something. Well, then you say that Jesus died through his stripes was not the full price being paid for you. You see, the thing is, we've never learned how to conquer. When sickness comes, the Bible says sometimes it will go through fasting and prayer. Can you really seek God for the victory? doesn't matter what doctors say. But the problem is we first go to doctors like Samuel, you know, in Samuel 4, they first went to the elders, they first went to, they never spoke to God about this situation. You see, that's why when they lost, if we do not first speak to God and bring to God by prayer and, 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 and uh, uh, through fasting, or whatever, speak to God regarding the situation because it's an attack. Sickness is an attack. In, in Acts chapter 10 verse 38 it says Jesus went throughout the whole country and everyone that was oppressed under the spirit of sickness or infirmity he loosened you see we are called to rule whatever today your relationship your finance how do you live if you look at yourself right now do you see yourself in victory doesn't matter if you lost your job doesn't matter if you don't have finance doesn't matter what sickness you have you see, death is not the end. If you have fear your sickness before because you fear dying, what happens? You live under fear. Fear is ruling your life. But you know what? Through the stripes of Jesus, there is healing. God doesn't matter your situation. He wants us to be rulers. And once again, we do not know how to make warfare. We do not know really our identity and position in Christ. That's why we struggle and we lose so many battles. And the more battles we lose, the more we see and look at the cross and we start to doubt who Jesus really is. Because we start to speak about our situations. And I'm just thinking, you know, in Exodus, I just read in the beginning where they saw God dealt with the Egyptians. But when they get to Jericho, they, they want spies and they check Jericho and they said, well, these giants, we were just like grasshoppers in their eyes and they're in our eyes. So unbelief led them 40 years to become the losers in the desert and not obtaining the promise of God. What is there in your life? What unbelief is there in your life that keeps you in bondage, being a loser and not a ruler? And after 40 years, they came back and God said, now, now it's time. You need to trust me. We will conquer the promises I have given to Abram, Isaac, and Jacob. So this is the promises God wants. Yes, if you are walking in the power of God, the promises are yes and amen. But if not, if you have sin and things in your life, guess what? You will struggle. Amen. So when the storm comes, when the storm comes how do you react to that? Do you react with boldness, with faith, or do you react with unbelief and moaning and worry and fear? Because if you live in worry, fear and anxiety, it just makes the Word of God, it kills the harvest of the Word. It kills the potential of the breakthrough. It kills the potential of becoming a ruler over a situation if you allow worry and anxiety and stress. That's why Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, don't be anxious about anything. If you worry about what you will eat or drink or clothing tomorrow, go and read what Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 says. 
Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all of these things. By faith I seek the kingdom. What is the word kingdom? Another meaning of the word kingdom is place of authority. So what does is, what is Matthew 6.33 Come to the place of authority. Who you are in Christ, then you will rule. About what? What you will eat and drink. Because you, just before verse 33 he said, the unbelievers are the ones worrying about what they will eat, what they will drink, what they will wear. We're not. Because we know we have a supplier, we have somebody that provides for us. Because we have this relationship with God. That's why we're not losers. But we have become losers because we've lost the art of war. We've lost the art of pressing in. We've lost the art. We're quoting the scriptures without the presence. We're quoting the scriptures with still sin in our lives. But we want the victory. We want to rule. But the rule we rule here. But when the storm come, we fade. And we start to moan. And we start to complain. And, 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 and we become the loser that we were never intended to. I mean, Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 says, I can do all things through him who strengthened me. Well, I could just stop that. Just that one scripture said, I can do all things. So whatever you are facing today, that one scripture, Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 said, I can do all things through him. Who's that? Jesus Christ. I want, I want to go to another scripture quickly. Um, I'm really excited. You know, scripture, actually, I don't have the Amplified in this one, but the Amplified really read it so much more. But let me read it for you in the International Standard Version. In Romans chapter 5, verse 2. Through Him, the Amplified says, Through Christ, we have also obtained access. So through Christ, we have access by our faith into His grace. Now, let's stop there. So through Christ, you accepted Christ by faith, by believing that Christ is the Messiah, the one, if you look at the cross being paid all, that you are more than a conqueror, a victor, uh, more than a conqueror in every situation. Through Christ, by your faith, we enter into His grace. Grace is unmerited favor. Means God will give the victory in 1 Samuel 7. When they see God, when they, when they dealt with the sin, there was this huge sound and brought confusion to the Philistines. And they start killing each other and God's people just finish the job. I want you to see that grace is unmerited favor, meaning you do not deserve it, but yet God gives you the victory. Amen. And the, grace got another meaning. He's enabling power. Just like that. So if you read Philippians chapter 4 verse 13, I can do all things. Romans 5 to just say the same thing. Through Christ, I obtain access by my faith into His grace. What is grace? Unabling power. Dunamis power. I mean, and then he said, uh, for grace by which we have established and we boast because of our hope in God's glory. And then he says, not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, and character produces hope. Now this hope does not disappoint us because God's love has poured out into our hearts. Actually, we have never a reason to be a loser. We have never a reason to lose any battle. But if we allow sin, if we allow to change our focus, because that's what the enemy does. Amen. I'm asking you today, are you living a life of victory? Are you living the life that was promised by the Bible, conquering everything that comes to you? Doesn't matter what happens today. Even COVID-19, doesn't matter the name of the devils. Or are you living in fear, anxiety, worry about things that's not yet even happened? Because of that, you live a life of a loser, not of a ruler. I want to go on. I said, my friend, God brought you out of, out of this world to rule and to conquer and break down principalities. Amen. James chapter 4 verse 7 says, resist the devil and he will run away from you. You see, the problem is we do not resist because we do not know our identity. We've lost that. Because we've lost the art to make war. 
There's sometimes we need to just to stand firm and let God do the thing that we so much trying to do by ourselves. Amen. First Corinthians, Corinthians chapter 6 verse 2. You know that the saints will rule the world, don't you? And if the world is going to be ruled by you, can't you handle insignificant cases? Once again, insignificant things in your life like sickness and joblessness and, and, and finance and brokenness is insignificant. Why? Because God brings restoration in His way. He died on the cross so that you and I can have the victory. When Jesus hung on the cross in, uh, cross in Matthew chapter uh, 27, uh, 50, when He said it is done, test the last time, he, he, he defeated the enemy. We do not need to live in fear. Colossians chapter 2 verse 15. And when he died, when he had disarmed the rulers and the authority, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in, at, in the cross. You and me were in him in the cross. So it's you and me making actually disarm and the rulers and the authorities and made a spectacle to the devil. So now my question is, if you and I were in Christ, being raised by the power, the same resurrection power, made a spectacle, how come you're going back and you've seen that? Being in Christ Jesus and allow the things that you've seen rule over you and you become the loser and you allow sickness to tell you when it's your time to die. You tell sickness when you awake and how you will live. Why you allow that? Start speaking God, start speaking the word of God, start speaking the authority that's within you. Start remind the devil that spirit of sickness. Listen, your time is up. When you have no finance, start speaking those things. Become obedient to the word of God. If you need to sow, sow. Let your seed become, speak on your behalf on, 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 before the throne of God. So whenever you give something, that seed speak on your behalf calling for a harvest for you but if you never sow how what will speak on your behalf before God you see we have all of these new things about tithing and no and not and the thing is it's not about what it's about what do you give to speak before God on your behalf what is the harvest you will have the same thing what speaks on your behalf? You see, what you speak here is actually things you speak and speaks on your behalf. When you speak to your situation, it must come in line. Why? Because the promise of God. God said He makes spectacle of the devil and authority and rulers of this world. Whatever the enemy tries to bring worry and anxiety, actually you by worry and anxiety and fear, just go and listen to last week's preaching, you will listen and see what it happens. You make barren the miracle that's about to happen through your worry and anxiety that you allow. So the devil know how. And then you become the loser. And what's the loser? You become a slave to the situation that you are actually created to rule over. Amen. You see, the cross is our victory, our rulership. Because when Jesus hung on the cross, He said, you know what? It is done. Test the last time. Amen. I just, I want to conclude. Another thing, you know, when Jesus died, the 12 disciples, I mean, He were raised and spent 40 days with the disciples. And just before He left, or just when He left, they went back in the upper room. The Bible says they were still, the, the room, 120 people, they were waiting on Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Jesus said, listen, wait for the power. Wait for the power to come upon you. That power is the one that will make you to rule. That is the power that will make you to live in victory. Wait for that power. So they went back to the upper room. Back to the old states of fear without Jesus. Even they had a promise. But they had to wait. Even behind, you know, uh, doors that was chained in fear. But on the 10th day, suddenly something happened. The Holy Spirit appeared and come upon them. And actually the chains were broken. They came out in the same neighborhood, the same people. And Peter stand up and spoke. And 3,000 come to Christ. You see, the question I'm asking, are you really being baptized in the Holy Spirit? 
Have you really been waiting for the power of God to come upon your life? Or you just get to God, you got baptized and you start running and you start doing things without being waiting for the power of God to come upon your life. Maybe that's one thing that we've never understood really in the church. Never being trained, never being, being, being taught about that. Amen. So when the power came over them, they were changed people. I want you to understand, God created us not as losers, but He created us to rule. Amen. Oh, there's so many things. I, I want to conclude Matthew chapter 16. Actually, there's so many verses that can add to this message. But Christian friend, are you a loser? Do you live a life of being oppression? Because if that, you're a loser. Because Jesus came and He paid all so that you can become the victor so that you can become the ruler of whatever the enemy brings, whatever storm. So that you can walk on water. That you can calm the storm. That you can speak to sickness and sickness will change. Amen. In Matthew 16 verse 15 to 19, Jesus was speaking about it. He was speaking to the disciples. He said, who do you say I am? Let me just go there. And I want to conclude on that. Uh, Matthew, Matthew, Matthew chapter 16. Let's go to verse 15. Now listen, he asked them, but who do you say I am? And I want to ask you today, who are you in Christ? Are you a loser? Are you moaning and worrying and you make your own seed, the seed of the word barren, that it never can produce a harvest, a miracle in your life? Change that, my friend. Start time to, to, to start repenting about your unbelief. Start repenting about the things that You've lost the presence of God because of that. Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And then verse 7, Then Jesus told him, How blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, since flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, thou my Father in, in heaven has. I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock that I will build my congregation, I will build my church, and the powers of hell will not conquer it. Just stop there. Are you built on the revelation of who the Messiah is because if you are built on the rock the Messiah Jesus Christ what he has done you will conquer whatever situation you will rule over whatever situation why because of the power of hell will not conquer it let's go on I tell you that you are Peter okay already verse 19 I will give you the keys to the kingdom from heaven whatever you prohibit on earth will will have been prohibited in heaven and whatever you permit on earth will have been permitted in heaven authority so listen Peter because of your revelation you know what my church 2000 years will walk in authority they will not be losers because what I have done in their lives on them on the cross and on that revelation if you understand who I am Peter the Messiah the son of the living God the son of the living God who saved you become the father of you his love just like in exodus where i've started in exodus uh, let me just get to that scripture 30 uh, exodus uh, 14 verse 30 it shows the father's love for the israelites how much more for you and me today through his son jesus christ and he's been given us the holy spirit in romans chapter 8 verse 20 20 20, 20, 20. let me just quickly get uh, 8 Verse 26, if you need help, ask the Holy Spirit. Romans 8 verse 26, ask of the Holy Spirit if you need help. What will He do? He will come into position. He will take authority and He will bring the victory. Just as God has opened the sea, He take authority, He take position. He brought them through the sea. They were standing on this side and they saw the miracle. They saw that make them rulers. They saw what God has done so that they be victorious. From the one moment from where they were from the next moment they who they were who they actually to the Father Himself. And I'm asking you today, who are you? What life are you living? You know, because every day you are living in fear and anxiety and stress, worries. It's a day you lived, not as a ruler, but as a loser. And the enemy has conquered your mind. It's time to, like, like, like Paul, you know, just shake off the snake. Shake it off. Get rid of it. And start believing God for it. And start to rise up. Let the Spirit of God just stir the gifts on the inside. And said, I had enough. I am here to rule. 
I have uh, the fullness of God already inside of me, the His Holy Spirit. I, 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 I've already been baptized. I've already been resurrected with the power, the same power, Philippians chapter 3, uh, chapter 3 verse 10, speaks about it. Uh, should I read it quickly? It just said, actually, for it's, let me just let me just quote it. Philippians chapter three verse ten. For it's for it's it's for my determined purpose to know the power outflowing from Him, the resurrection power that raised Him from the dead. Go and read Philippians chapter three verse ten. This it's my purpose to know that, my purpose to understand the power. How I can depart the sea, how I can make mountains to go, how I can tell this mountain be removed and it will remove, how I can tell to this fig tree, I don't see any fruit, I curse you and it will be cursed. Not that we curse people, I want you to understand the power and the expectation Jesus has for you and for me. So ask yourself, are you going to live today a loser under the oppression of the devil? Even he's being defeated. Even you saw that in Christ on the cross through his power, through his resurrection power. Are you going to allow that? Are you going to say, God, please forgive me. I've missed that. Even I know I must rule. I've allowed the lies of the devil. I just want to get, I shake it off today. Because that's sin. And that's sin I need to deal with. And I just repent. I will come in the day of fasting. I will seek your face. But Lord, I will seek you because I need to get back into the place you've created me. The place you put me in this world to build your kingdom. And whatever the needs, it will be met by you because that's your promise. I would like to pray for you today. Father, I thank you for the word of God. Please, Lord, forgive us. Forgive us for becoming losers. How come lose this, Lord? Because we forgot our position in Christ Jesus. We've allowed the enemy to, to talk by moaning and worry and anxiety and stress and make the problems we face, the storms, becoming more bigger and Jesus more, more smaller. Whereas we've been called to have to conquer, we have been called to, to eradicate the works of the devil. And yet we failed, Lord. Yet we pray and nobody else experienced the change in the atmosphere. Therefore, I just pray, Lord, that we will start to rise up, rise up and become more than conquerors. And that we can say, according to uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, I can do all things through Christ Jesus. I can. Not because of me, but because I believe. I choose to believe. And because I choose to believe and give my heart for Christ, I became a ruler and not a loser. And therefore, Lord, forgive me for allow the lies of the devil. But today I make a choice. I stand up, Lord. I stand up. I take back what the enemy has stolen from me. Because, yes, he stole it from me because I was in a period of losing. But now it's time to get back. Get back what the enemy has stolen. Therefore, I, I just call on that, Lord. Whatever the enemy has stolen to bring back sevenfold in Jesus name. Why? Because I have the authority and by the words I speak is the word that God speak according to Isaiah 59 the last verse and Isaiah 55 says the word I speak is the word that will work until it completes and fulfills to what I said and therefore Lord we are conquerors we are not losers but we are rulers and therefore I just pray for a fresh release of your anointing Father for the authority just shake Father the heavens that every chain that the enemy has has chained us with any 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 prison that we've been locked in Father that we've allowed not to rule anymore but by the things and sin and, and things that we've allowed in our lives we just break it in Jesus' name because today is a time of being set free. Right now, right now in this moment, Father, we have been set free. We will live. We will live with authority in Jesus' mighty name. And let our lives honor you, building your kingdom, coming to the place of authority in Jesus' mighty name. Be honored. We just want to worship you, Lord, and thank you. Fill us with a fresh anointing. Just touch our hands, Lord. Just touch it. Stir the gift. Let us feel that something arise on the inside and authority because we take back, Father, what the enemy has stolen. We've been restored as rulers in all areas where we 
were for a time being losers. We've been restored right now by the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. May God bless you. May you have an amazing Wednesday. Just now I pray for you. Jesus loves you. And take back. Remember who you are in Christ and what he has done for you. Don't allow the lies of the devil. Don't become a loser with Christ Jesus on your side. Because if you in the right in the right relationship, you will rule, you will have the victory every time. Because that's the promise. Jesus loves you. Thank you for watching. Share this with somebody. Maybe it can save somebody's lives. In Jesus' name. God bless you.